Good morning to everybody. I'm very pleased to be at the IRMCI conference representing ADENF, and I'm grateful to Olivier Orogi for inviting ADENF to support and cooperate in the organization of this conference for the sí. anniversary of the risk of the risk banking and finance society. Some of them's members are speakers, have been speakers at this conference. Some paper presented here, I hope, are going to be published in a special issue of Adams journal, that is JF and I, and uh, we have the editor-in-chief of JFMI, that is Santiago, that we give a presentation of the journal, and also two members of the editorial board, that is Oliviero and Giampaolo. They both will tell you what we are doing in this important uh, initiative. Uh, a few words about ADENF. Quale? Questo? A few words about ADENF. ADENF is an, the Italian scientific society representing Italian academics in banking and other financial institute management and economics, markets and corporate finance. ADENF has about uh, 360 members reaching a high coverage on, on academics in banking and finance in Italy. The primary mission of ADEMS is to promote high-level research on banking, financial intermediaries, finance, focusing on financial intermediaries and bank management specificity, and helping our young researchers to implement uh, their research with strong and internationally evaluated uh, methodology. Among ADEMS initiatives, uh, uh, our winter and summer conferences. The next uh, will be held in September in Rome, and the call for papers is closing tomorrow. And uh, uh, is some, another initiative that is really important for us is a summer school on uh, research methodologies and tools. It uh, will be take. Uh, uh, it will be held in next July in Lecce. Uh, without using too much time, let me offer some thoughts uh, on the topics to be discussed in this session. Banks and other financial intermediaries are facing hard transformations and troubles, not only in Italy or Europe. In the next future, but to be correct also in the present and in the past five years, we are questioning about uh, how profitability can be maintained and which are new risks. This morning we will discuss about this. But I think that future trends will impact not simply on profitability of financial intermediaries, especially banks, but uh, on the architecture of financial systems and intermediaries in a measure that, in my opinion, could be really disruptive. It's not easy to predict uh, the level and direction of the change, nor the speed of this change, but probably uh, the probability of disruptive, uh, disruptive scenarios is not zero. The question, in my opinion, is not if, but when, and at some extent, how. As far as I see, we have to know two relevant game changers that are technology and regulation. As for technology, it has to be considered an input factor for financial industry as important as capital and labor. Technology can influence competitive environment, products, and customer relationships. New technologies, uh, blockchain ex in example, and uh, DLT uh, in general, are going to transform the entire business area, entire business area, not only the payment system, Bitcoin, I know you talk about them, 
Bitcoin or Bitfiorino are not uh, the only example of how these technologies, these new technologies, can change in a radical manner <laughs> uh, the whole industry and some business areas. Uh, if I can take uh, uh, this reasoning to the extreme, we have to reflect on this. In the crowd capitalism that is possible in consequence of this te new technology, do we still need, do we still need financial intermediaries? Do we still need central banks? I think that research and thought is needed on these topics. The second game changer, uh, almost in Europe, in my opinion, is regulation and more prudential supervision. Uh, maybe my point is too hard, but I guess, and I'm not alone uh, on this theme, that regulation is biased on a specific business model, the one deriving or representing an evolution of the originate to distribute philosophy based on trust on market and market efficiency. In the future also now, the traditional intermediation, the business model based on traditional intermediation uh, is no more convenient because much capital is needed for this model of intermediation. Credit costs in terms of capital. NPL generate costs and have to be sold rapidly on markets uh, as for told by regulation and prudential supervision. That, in my view, is not quite an a quite efficient solution. Uh, on the other side, some doubts arise about SME and their financial culture that makes them reluctant to go to debit markets and markets uh, uh, in general and continue to ask for credit for intermediation. Also on these topics, in my view, uh, we need more research thought and action. And next uh, um, speeches are on this, uh, will be on these topics. So thank you, Oliviero, for the invitation. And I leave the floor to Thank you, Rossella. Thank you, Oliviero. Uh, it's a, an honor and a privilege to be here and to present the special issue uh, that the Journal of Financial Management Markets and Institutions uh, is um, uh, managing to uh, cover part of the topics that have been discussed during this conference. Um, and the program of this conference can be uh, a good starting point to explain the aims and scopes of this special issue, um, which today's when we talk about risk management, covers a broad uh, range of topics. If you, if you read through the program, you will see that from corporate governance, banking, other financial institutions, uh, talking about agents, but at the same time industries, um, methodologies, and products, processes, uh, are all topics that can be directly or indirectly uh, analyzed through risk management uh, approaches. And uh, our purpose is to um, compare and to create a debate, not only due, uh, within the special issue, but uh, as Santiago is going to say, uh, using the platform of our journal, uh, a debate which is uh, part of the debate after the crisis. The crisis was a real and financial crisis, but at the same time we can say that was a crisis for some of uh, methodologies that we used to uh, apply to previous uh, 
problems. It was a, a crisis for risks. We are talking about risks that before the crisis we uh, did not know or we undervaluated, actually. We were talking about uh, risk-free uh, assets and today they are not risk-free uh, anymore. So everything has changed, as we know, and what we try to, uh, to manage, uh, uh, analyzing all the, all the papers that uh, have been uh, uh, submitted or have been uh, pre-submitted pre to, the, to the journal, is to uh, create um, uh, an issue uh, comparing these different contributions. Um, ju just to say something more, uh, I would say more uh, specific to, uh, for, the, for the issue, uh, we received 36 pre-submissions. Um, the final submission is scheduled for uh, mid-July, 15 July, and I remind you that for all those that pre-submitted uh, th their papers, uh, the, the submission fee, fee is, uh, doesn't exist, it's free. Um, so we, uh, we, we schedule the, the issue at the end of this year, uh, the, the second number of, this, uh, of our journal, and I'm absolutely confident that this conference is providing a top high uh, value uh, contribution. So thank you very much for the organization of this conference and for giving us the opportunity to collect these papers. Thanks so much.